Let me talk in this video about two algorithms. One of them is nearest neighbor and second one is short path. So first of all, why we use this algorithm? In some way, we have some graph and we want to see what the chip is cost to see if this graph is connected or not. For example, I would give you a basic example. If I have this node, this node, this node, and this node, and this node, let's say about I have this node. Okay, and these nodes are connected using this way. Okay? But if you see, I have this node are connected. Okay? And I have 5, 10, 12, 6, 11, 9, uh, 5, 2, 1. The question is, think about it. This is just you are working for company, for cable company. Or this is node. And uh, this cities or this is number of point are connected using this cable different than this for example five meter and this one six meter and other size the way we, the way what i wanted or the your boss won't say hey would they, uh, hey there is many line unnecessary line connected you see we use it in this graph please find a cheapest cost that we have to do to connect this graph so we would to solve this problem we would use Hamiltonian circuit Hamiltonian circuit so this circuit have two rules first of all a graph have to be connected and second rule have to be no circle okay so you have to be in this rule first of thing the your graph have to be connected second rule uh, have have to be a circuit. So let me start with the first algorithm. That means nearest neighbor. So if you start from here, and let me suppose in this way. So what the nearest neighbor for this node? You have five, ten, twelve. The nearest neighbor is the five one. Is that right? Yes. Now I have two nodes. And from this side I have twelve and ten, and from this side I have two. Which is the cheapest one? For sure, two. Okay. Cool. Now I have f 12. If I just remove it again to show you, I have 12, 10, 5, 1. Which one the cheap? For sure, the one is the cheapest. The cheapest one is 1. So I just remove it. Here you go. That's cool. Now, which other end? I have 5, 12. I have 12, 8, 10, 5, 9, 11. Which one is the cheap? For sure. The five is the cheapest one. Now let me think about it. What I have, if I just remove this one again, so what then what the other end you have it? You have twelve, five, twelve, nine, eleven, and you have six. Which one is cheapest one? For sure the six is the cheapest one. So I would take the six. Now is that graph connected? Yes, you cover all the nude. But there is many addition nodes that unnecessary you you avoid them. So you did not use this one, you did not use this one, you did not use this one, and you did not use it. How how much line of cable you save? Ten. If you say you have ten plus twelve plus eleven plus nine, you have nine, ten, nine, twelve, three, one, four. So you save forty-two meter for this graph because this graph now already connected even using only this line now all the nodes are connected is that right yes all the nodes are connected now so you save too many time this is a basically how this graph work so think about it if if this same graph you have here six and you have here for example for example you have here uh, five so you have ten 12 13 so now let me think about how you solve it if i've been in this point let me just remove this line hopefully i could remove it here we go now if you select which next point you say okay there is many points i have 10 or 12 or 6 or 5 or 13 so i would say okay 5 is the cheapest one so i will take 5 but if you take 5 you will create circuit so that's mean you will just if you say here there is a circuit will be here three line are connected and you did not satisfy this condition so for sure you will even if the five is the cheapest but you will not take it because this one makes circuit so you will not take it again you still you still taking 
6 because 6 is, is the next cheapest line you would take it. Yeah, this is basically how you solve your problem using nearest nav bar. What about short path? Short path is same nearest nav bar, but it's really most easy. So let me show you how it works. If I just remove all this line, all addition line, okay? Hopefully, I just clean the graph. Again, let me, I will turn the numbers again. I see, I see here was one. Okay, two, five. Mm -hmm. Yes, here we go. So now I ask you to solve this problem using short path. Short path, you select the short one. Which, if you look through graph, you scan it. Which is the short path? You see, you say one is the short one. Do you have another one? No. Now, what the next short one is two. So you would say, okay, I have two here and I have two here. What's the third short one? You say five. However, which one you select from the five? Let me suppose we select um, this one. Could I select this five now? This is the second five? No, I cannot select it because this makes circuit for me. So I cannot, I cannot sec select this one because it makes circuit for me. Because it creates circuit. Also, uh, I cannot select this five also because also will make circuit for me. Because if you select it, you will, you will have a circuit, and this is not satisfy the condition. So just remove it. Now uh, this two five you cannot use them, so just add line on them. You cannot use them. Now with the next one, you have six, ten, thirteen. For sure, six is the cheapest one. You say I would say six. Now you cover the graph. How much you save? You save five and five, and. 10 and 13 so 10 and 13 3 1 5 5 5 10 13 3 1 33 you save 33 meter from the cable so now also you're still covering the graph but use only this node okay this is basically what the difference between short pass and nearest network yes here we done and thank you for watching and see you next buddy let me talk in this video about textra algorithm Dextra algorithm is one of the most interesting algorithms to find short path. So if you are, for example, in New York City and you want to go to Brooklyn, okay? So uh, when you add, open the Google map and you click find, you will find you a short path to go between these two cities. And how Google map works to find short path, he would use exactly Dextra algorithm. Even if there is many engineering, uh, software engineering who work on Google did on the Dextra algorithm, to find your short path to save your time and many things but still when he find the short path he used Dextra algorithm as a cover so now let me think about how Dextra algorithm works you have this graph let me suppose I have number of cities I want to start from city S and I want to go to city G so I want you to find me a short path if you see there is a space like one two four this is mean how much distance between one city and another so to find a short path you would use with Dextra, you would, you, you would explore all the nodes. What I mean by that, you have to mention all the nodes. How many do I have here? Five. You would say, okay, I have to have five nodes in this way. Say one, two, So I just do it in this way. This is city. What is the node? What node do I have? I have S. I have A. I have B. I have C. I have G. The order doesn't matter. So you could add in any order. But this is how you would, how I would write it. So I would start from node S. If I want to go S to S, there is nothing need because I'm still on S, so I don't have to do anything. If I want to go to S to A, how much I need? One. Okay, so I would say I would take one and I go from S. Okay, next step. Let me just delete this line. If I want to go from S to B, if you see, it would take four. So I would take four S. Now if I want to go from S to C or S to S to C, if there's any line, I think question no. So if you don't have anything, you add infinity. There is any one between S to G, nothing, infinity, because I don't see any connection between these, these two nodes. So now next, what the next point? If you look through what I have, I have 
uh, I have nothing. I don't need it. I have one, four, infinity, infinity. What's the last one? Or the last value? The last value I have here is one S. That means my next step is A. So I would write here A. Okay? And let me just remove this other line because to make my code clear. Okay? So my next point is A. So how to go to S, S already visit, I will not go to it. A, I am visit already, so I will not do anything to it. Now let me think about other stuff. I'm in A, I want to go to B. If you see the graph here, you A, and you want to go to B, you take this line, you take two to go between A to B. But to go to A, you already take it one. If you see it here, I already have one. So it's better for you to hint you add one here. The cost to came to A is one. So you say 1 plus 2 is a 3, so it's a, the cost here is a 3a, okay? Cool. So to go between these two points, you need 3a because you just you have to send the previous value also. To go between a to c, if you see here, a to c is 5. But already you have value 1, so 1 plus 5 is 6a. Okay, what about next? a to G, if you see here, 12. So 12 plus 1, 13A. So let me do it in this way, 13A. So now what the less value on this line? You see 3, 6, 13. For sure, the 3 is the less one. So my next point is B. So you have to write here B, and also write under the cost for B. How much the cost is 3. Okay? So it help you to the next point to find it. So now I already visited. S already visited, A already visited, and B already visited. Now let's think about next two points. So I'm in B. B, how much it costs it take to go to C? Take two. If you see it, two in the graph. If you don't see it in this way, you need it to a different line, different color. I would use take two. But the cost to come to B is a three. So three plus two is five. Is that right? Yes. Five A or five B. Because I'm coming from B. If there is any cost to go to G from B to G, I don't see any line connected between B and G. So I would you would copy same value. You have a 13. So make sure if you have value and the, the next value that you have it is less than the old value, you would add the less one. If you have the next value is greater than, you would not add it. So what I mean by that, if you look through here, here. I added 5B because 5B is less than 6, but if the cost here is, is 9B, you would you would copy only 6A because the 6A is cheapest one. So you always copy the cheapest one, but I here I have the cheapest one is 5B, 5B is less than 6A, so I would add 5. Okay? Here I copy it same because mm, there's no change, and I don't have any, any, any change in this value. Here you go. Now, what's the chips value? I have 5 and I have 13. Which one is the chips? For sure, 5B is the cheapest. So I'm here in C. So make sure I'm in C. So I would say, okay, C. Well, the cost to go to C is 5. Visit it, visit it, visit it, visit it. Go to, now I want to go to bit from C to G. Take a 3 and I have 5. How much to be? 8. So 8. 8 and I have it here C. That's cool. So now I'm accessing to C, so I'm done. So now let me find the short part according to this graph. So let me use different colors so you'd understand. So now I'm here in 8C, that means I'm coming from C. So let me go next and see where is C. If you see it, C here. So C, if you see it here, C is coming from 5B, this one. So that means the previous one is, is B. B is coming from 3A. Okay? So the next one is A. The A coming from 1S. So the next one is S. So if you want to explore the graph, you would say, okay, the short path is, um, the short path is, uh, I'm, uh, I was in G, so I came from C, and C came from B, and B, come from A and A come from S. So if you see the short path, 8, 1, 2, 1, and 3, 6, 7, 8. This is the short path. This is how this algorithm works. 
I hope you understand it. Just keep in your mind point like if you have two values, if you see here, the new one is less than the old one. So you add the new one. If the new one, like as, as I told you, if this one is 10, so you would you will keep six. You would you not you would not add five. You would keep six a, six a. You will not replace it because it's, it's still this one cheaper. So I will replace it. If you don't have any new value, you would add same value, same phrase value. Yes, sir, we're done. Uh, thank you for watching and see you next. Buddy, let me talk in this video about another interesting algorithm. Name it A star algorithm. A star algorithm also algorithm find short path, but it's it dependent on a uh, heuristic value to get the short path. When we say heuristic value, that means this value is work, but not in all cases. It's true, but not in all cases. And that's what we see in the travel salesman when we apply. If you have a travel salesman, the man who travels between cities, and you want to find uh, the best way to he, he, he could allow he could travel between all the cities and visit all the cities once. You would use short nearest neighbor, for example. But nearest neighbor will not work in all the case. So when the your algorithm work, but not in all the cases, we this one we name it heuristic. So the low here we would say f of n equal g of n plus h of n. Okay, g of n is the real value. That means this one g of n. When we say h of n, we mean this value, this one h value. Okay. So now, if you think, okay, find short path using uh, a star algorithm. So you would say, okay, I'm in state a. Okay, and what the cost for a to go s? What the cost for s to go to a? You would say it would take one. So let me suppose here, I would say s to a. Okay. So s to a, you say f of n equal g plus h. How much the g, if you see it between a and s, is 1, so you say 1, plus, what the value for a here, 6, you say, okay, 6, 1 plus 6, how much, 7, so the cost to go between s to a is 7, so let me do other child for a, for s, is, is, what's the other child, other child is b, so s to b, you would again say f equal g plus h how much the g 4 how much the h for b 2 so 4 plus 2 is 6 okay now you have 6 and 7 which one is better again s uh, if you have 4 and 2 is 6 is that right yes so which one is better which one is cheapest for sure this one is cheapest so I would explore this tree. You say, okay, I'm in B, and I will explore B. What I have in B, have C only. Say, okay, B, yes, I mean A to B to C. So, again, now, uh, what the F of N equal G plus H. How much G I have it here? I have 2. Plus, how much H I have it for C is 1. But wait a minute. I already have to use the previous cost. If you see the previous cost here is 4. Okay? So you have to use the previous cost to come to this point. So I to come to this point, I take 4. You say 4 plus 2 plus 1. 4 plus 2 is 6. Plus 1 7. Okay? So now I have 7 here and I have 7 here. So which one I would take? I would take uh, in the order. So I have here A and I have B. I have C. So for sure I would take A, because A is the less order from B. So yes, let me go back and continue with the next value here. So if I go to A, what I have in A, I have B, C, G. You say, okay, I have a three child. This one, let me just make it more, so make your work it a little bit good. So you say A, S to go to A, and A, a go to B. Is that right? Yes. So S go to A and uh, S, S, A, B. So F equal G plus H. How much the cost? If you see S to uh, A to B, that's mean this one. 2, I have the cost is 2, plus H1 for B is 2, so 2 plus 2. But I have to get the cost to get A. How much the cost for A is 1, if you see it here. So I say 1 plus 2 plus 2, 
so 4 5 so here is the cost should be 5 you have to continue I'm still on a but now I want to get a another solution here I would say a going or s going to a and a going to c how much the cost f equal g plus h the previous cost is 1 plus the cost for s to c is 5 all these plus the heuristic value for c you see it is 1 so 6 7 and another one here I have it s to a to g that's mean I go through this path I have f equal g plus h I have previous value as 1 plus the new value as 12 plus the cost to go to the g is 0 is that right? yes 0 so I would say plus 0 so this one should be 13 ok now I have uh, I have 5 7 13 7 so the cheapest one is 5 for sure so you would continue from here you say S going to A going to B so when I'm here I'm in B here B should go only to C is that right? yes going to C so F equal G plus H so the previous cost is 3 here plus the new cost is 2 and the cost go to the C is 1 so 1 uh, 5 here I have 3 5 6 so the cost here 6 so now I have 6 7 13 7 so still this one is the cheapest let me continue I say I am in C so C could only go to G you say A is going to A A going to B B going to C C going to G F equal G plus H and well, the G I have it, the previous value is a 3 plus 2, 5, that 5 plus the new value is a 3, 3, and that plus the heuristic value of 4G is 0, so it will be 8. Now, here we go, you would say, okay, I have 8 here and I have 7, 7, you have to continue with this one and this one, until you get finally this one cheapest. But, uh, uh, when you go to the next process for this one is S to A to C, if you are in C, if you see it here, wait a minute. I say okay here I have I'm in C so C if I say here I completed I would say this one have to go to S to A to C to G so say F equal G plus H so I have press value as 5 plus 1 is 6 plus 3 7 3 plus the rest value is 0 6 7 8 9 6 should be 9 here Okay, and you would continue for this one. You say, okay, now I have 8, 9, 13, 7. You say, okay, I would continue from this one. You say, I have S, B, C. Then you say, okay, I would go to G. You say, F equal G plus H. So the previous value is 6 plus the value is a 3 plus 0. Again, 9. So I have here 9, 9, 13, 8 so this is the cheapest one so that's the cheapest way to go with and through this graph is by going according to the graph as you see it is starting from let me just start from s and from s you go to a then from a to b from b to c and from c to g this is basically how he he showed here and this is the basic way how we could solve it using graph but you could also use a priority queue to solve this problem and I would say priority queue is the better way and easy to track if you want to solve this problem and I will show you how in seconds so if I just remove this one and try to draw my priority queue here let me just clean everything for you I know it's take time for me to clear it but yes I don't need to use this part let me just clean this and this one here you go so yes, to, to use priority queue, we use this way. I would use it in this, I would draw it in this way. There you go, this is my priority queue. I know it's a little bit big, but yes, this could show all the details for you and for me. Now if I want to just take this one off, 
and this is my priority queue so I would say priority queue I would start from S so S to A how much I have F equal G plus H so for G I would say take 1 and the H for A if you see it here 6 so 1 plus 6 equals 7 okay so 7 the final cost so what another child I have it for S it's B so S to B how much the cost uh, F equal G plus H so how much G for plus H for B is 2 so I see it's 6 I have the here so prior to Q when he take the value he take the last one so what the last one I have it here is 6 so he will take this one from the Q because this one is the cheapest one so he explore the child for for you if you want to do the graph so it would be easy it will explore the child for S A sorry S B this way S B but make sure keep the value for it so how much the value for the cost right here the cost is 4 so it would help you next so I say okay I have it now this value S B and I want to start exploring from B okay B what B is where you go so I say S B go could only go to C F equal G plus H how much the G I have here 2 plus this G 4 plus the H I have it for C 1 okay 6 2 plus 4 6 plus 1 7 so now I have 2 7 but about the order A is the less order so I would take A so I would say yes here I would remove this one I would take S to A and the cost if you see it 1 so take this one off and start to explore now A for me you say for A I have three child the one is S going to A and A going to B the F equal G plus H the G for it is 2 as I see it here is 2 plus the origin G is 1 so plus the H for B is 2 so the final is 5 what another one another option is going to A and A could go also to C you say F equal G plus H the old value is 1 plus the value I have it is 5 plus the C heuristic value is 1 so 5 6 7 what other one is going to A going to G was the fraction F G plus H the old value is 1 plus 12 plus 0 the heuristic value so it should be 13 now you have all the value you have 577 7, so which value you take S A B you say okay I would take S going to A and A going to B and the value I have it here 1 plus 2 is a 3 so I would take this value now let me add other value but now I have two place empty here I have empty I will add in this play doesn't mean anything a priority queue and a priority queue you take less one so now I'm in B here so I would say S going to A A going to B B going to C F equal G plus H the origin value I have it here 3 plus the value here I have it 2 plus H of C is 1 so 5 3 plus 2 5 plus 1 6 now with the next one if you see this is what cheapest one you say okay the next one is this one is A S going to A going to B going to C and the cost is 2 plus 3 5 so let me remove this one okay now that we add what I where I am now I'm here and C so C one option is going to G so you would say yes I would say S going to A going to B going to C going to G F equal G plus H the origin G I have it here 5 
plus the g here have the three plus the heuristic value zero how much i have eight so keep it in the queue now i have two seven here here i have seven and i have seven i take the order s a b s b c or s a c both of them end with c so you could take any one you would like so let me suppose i would take Mm -hmm. I would take this one. I would take first one. I would take S, B, C, and the cost is 2 plus 4 is 6. Okay, I would take this one. So I would say S, B, C. If I'm still in B, C, I could go only to G. So I say G f equal g plus h so g already have it 6 plus the g here 3 plus 0 so 9 I have here now which one is the last one I have this one is less so yes yeah, so remove this one and say okay I have s a no not this one less this one is list s a c and the cost is 1 plus, how much the cost? SAC is 1 plus 5, 6. So 6 the cost. So you say, okay, take this one. Now what you have is AC, one option you have to go G, F equal G plus H. So how much G I have it? You say the origin one is 6 plus 3 plus 0, so 9. Now with the chip one? is this one is this the vinyl yes yeah, it's, it's g so the cheap one is s same thing s uh, this one s going to a a going to b b going to c c going to g this is how i just how uh, a star work hello done and thank you for watching buddy that we talk in this video about dynamic programming so what do you mean by dynamic programming Dynamic programming means you have a problem and this problem is very big. You will finally separate in small problems and this small problem could contribute in the solution of the other one. For example, this one could contribute to find solution for this one and this two could contribute to find solution for this one and this three could contribute to find solution for this one. We use dynamic programming when we have repeated operation. For example, uh, I have some operation repeated more than one time. So instead of uh, repeating this operation, I use dynamic programming by storing this operation and retrieve it when I need it. So could I give you a basic example about dynamic programming? Yes, I could give you. So if you know, what you, do you know about Fibonacci series that have zero, one, then have one, then two, then three, then five, then eight, then 13. So what do you think about this series and how the series work? This series is really easy. Every number is coming from something two number previous. So 13 coming from this one and this one. So five came from this one and this one. Three, two came from this one and this one. And every number like eight came from five and three. And this is how the series work. Like everyone come from operation of sum of two number if you did you see there is many repeated operation happen for example when you go to 13 13 came from five, uh, 8 and 5 okay and same thing if you came to 8 so let me suppose select this 13 and select 8 so you would understand Th 8 coming from 13 again 8 coming from 5 and 3 did you see 5 is use it to find 8 and use it to find 13 so this is a repeated operation instead of five of doing operation twice time so you save 5 and when you need use it you would use it so let me suppose when you solve this this series using normal coding way so how you solve it first you reduce recursion so you say okay i have fib and this fib taking integer x okay and you say if x equal equal 0 you would return 0 and if x equal equal 1 you return 
one and else this is the good point you would return what you would return you would return Fibonacci for x minus one and Fibonacci plus Fibonacci x minus two because if I have x this is x minus one x minus two so this is how the how you solve it using recursive mode as I told you this is not good because there is many repeated operation happen so a basic again example if you see eight here eight coming from five three and five cool yes or deal yes deal five is coming from three and two if you see three is contributed in two operation finding five and finding eight so there is many repeat operation happen so I say okay why I'm doing it this way why we don't store the value so the basic and easy way say no this is too complex and there is many internal operation happen more than one time so I would say the easy peasy way you would say okay I would use array and in this array we will start only zero and one and any of anyone I could find it from previous two operation you say okay this one could find it by some this one and this one so one plus zero is one so second how could find it it's coming from some this two one one plus one two next one this one is coming from some two three so this one coming from some previous two how much five this one is coming from some previous two how much eight this one coming from some previous two 13. did you see how saving a result it contribute to find uh, the solution now for Bonisha uh, solution will be very easy you say okay just fib I just receive an integer x and say okay you say integer fib okay and this array a new integer would be x plus one the size for it and say fib for zero equal zero fib for one equal one and you do the operation it's really easy you say for i equal to i less than x plus one then say i plus a plus then say fib for i is coming from fib for i minus one plus fib i minus two and that is this is the basic solution so did you see how storing value help to find next this is what mean dynamic program dynamic problem dynamic programming you mean hey take the problem spread on small problems and see how you could make one solution contribute to find solution for other one and you're storing the value and you get avoiding many repeated operation we will take more example of us dynamic programming so right what are you waiting for let's go next and see another problem buddy let me talk in this video about one interesting problem you see it daily in google when you search and we will talk how we could solve it using dynamic programming so when you open google and you try to look for same thing something i would not say i would write it this way so when you write enter how google understand you are looking for for example for hussein or Rubai. even I, I did not write in the right way I just same thing complex so how google understand what you mean this is what name it in a programming edit distance so google try to compare two words and see which the nearest word to the word that you are looking for and it try give you the solution but let me understand how this algorithm work and how we could how we could solve it using dynamic programming so let me suppose you have two words you have cat and you have dog okay so what is you will do to compare this to word so first of all you say okay I could do three process first process I would I could solve a problem by insert G to the cat so the cat will be cottage and I have her dog okay and G with G is going so I have only this okay second process you say no I would remove T by doing this process remove remove T so you have car you have dog okay third process you would do it you say okay I would do replace okay by taking this 
and this I would I would replace for example T by G so I say Kaj and ka and Doge Doc so G with G is going so see the solution that you have it you either taking one character remove inserting character you either remove character or either replace character so you have three process to do but let me say let me go to more details and try to understand this problem in more details so if I suppose I have this two word I have here dog or cat and I have dog okay what's the first three solution you say have insert delete replace I would first I would say I am inserting G so I would have in this way or I would say cat and do why because G from two word is gone because if you see I have G here I inserted G here so this G with this G is gone I have this two word only remain same thing if I just try to do remove T remove T so I would say have ka and I have also dog third one I have remove replace I say replace T with G so I would say okay I would have it in this way ka and do you know why because we removed already now you continue with this process here you say okay same thing I have insert O so I would have here so O with O here, so I still have D only here, and you have cat here. When you here remove T, T, so you would you would have K and Do, and here you replace T by replace T with O. So T with O remove it, so you will have K and D only. Is that right? Yes. Same thing for this one. You do you do same three process. I want to. I not want to go to the details. So here you will have K and D. Here you have uh, have only C and D. And here you would have only C and D for insert delete update. So I say here insert. Here I have remove A. And here is replace A by G. Same thing, I do three process here for this one. So I would have here K and D when I'm inserting. Here I would have C and D O when I remove A. And here I have C with D. So let me see where is the repeated operation I want to avoid. I have cut and D here. Do I have cut and D? I don't think I have cut and D, so okay, this is not repeated. Now let me go to the next. I have so this is not repeated, so let me remove this line. So let me suppose see K and Do. Do I have K and Do? So K and Do here. So if I go here, K K and Do, I see here K and I'm sure here's here when you inserting it be K and Do, not K and Li. Here K and Do when you insert G. So it be K and Do. So yes, here I, I have K and Do and here I have K, K and Do. So they are repeated operation here I have. Okay? Cool. Here K and D only. Do I have K and D only? Let me look. No, no, yes. So I have another repeated operation. Let me see here. Do I have C and Do? Yes, I have SC and do and I have SC and do. Did you see how many repeat operation I have? So you say, okay, I'm calculating this operation is happen here. Okay? And this operation is same thing happen here. And this operation is something happen here. So why I repeat the operation twice and twice and twice? And while I could do it one time. So here has come the dynamic program. You can say, okay, I could solve this problem. Instead, I have many recursive call, many repeated operation. I would solve it using dynamic programming. So how do that? I will tell you how. First of all, you just create array. What the word? I have two words, three. 
so I do array 4 by 4 because every array have a 3 character so if I have a 3 I would use 4 because I need 1 addition so yes here is it here is my array so I would use 4 rows 1, 2, 3, 4 ok cool and how many columns I have it for sure 4 also say 1 2 3, 4 so now I want to solve this problem you say ok what the two words you want to compare I have cat hair and I have dog hair ok so I just add two word hair and hair you just keep this one in pity and this one in pity so let me try to compare this two so before you compare you just add this number say this one I add 0 1 2 3 just initial value on this column you say 0 1 2 3 this is as initial value for your work so now try to think about how you find other values so I want to find this value we say we do either insert delete or update so so insert delete update so either i i minus 1 and j minus 1 or i minus 1 with j insert and delete or j with or or i with j minus 1 so this is the three of them either i'm using insert or delete or replace so if you if you compare i minus j I minus 1 and J minus 1 so if you go I minus 1 you go row below J minus 1 you, he mean this one if I say I minus 1 and uh, J that's mean I minus 1 J that's mean he mean this one if I say I and J minus 1 that's mean he mean this one I select the cheapest one with the cheapest one is 0 so the previous value is 0 but plus the cost of change always the cost of change is 1 so 0 plus 1 now I have here 1 now I go here to O, doc, this is O. So O is C, is they are equal? No, they are not equal. So I will I will take cheapest one from here. The cheapest one here is, I have one, one, and two. The cheapest one is one. One plus the one cost for replace, so it be two. So now I go here, I take the cheapest one. C and G, is they are equal? No, if they are not equal, I'm take cheapest one. So if they are equal, no, I just move the previous cell. You will see it. So they are not equal, I take cheapest one is 2, 2 plus 1 should be a 3. So here we find the values for the first row. Let me go next. A with D. If they are equal, no. Take cheapest one here. With the cheapest one, 1, 1, and let me just remove this line so it be not complex for you. 1, 1, and 2. With the cheapest one is 1. Plus 1, 2. Here, A and D. Oh, if they are equal, no. Take cheapest one. With the cheapest one. 1 here, I have value 1, plus 1, 2. Now, A and G, is that a call? No, take cheapest 1, the cheapest 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. So here you go, I'm just done from this column. Now let me go to the third column, you say, okay, T and D, is that a call? No, so take cheapest 1, the cheapest 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. Is T with O a call? No, take cheapest 1, 2, plus 1 is 3. Is T with G a call? No take cheapest one two plus one three so if you see this be the cost the cost to to the, or, or the similarity between cat and dog is three why because you need to change a three character to match between these two word so let me try to see is this algorithm correct for every character so what about if they have same character similar for example I would say the last character is the same so I would say, okay, here I have T, for example, okay? so I would have two words, cat, and I have the second word is dot. So they have last character same, so the cost should be two, not a three. So how does algorithm work? So let me start from here. Is C equal D? No, take cheapest one. The cheapest one is zero plus one, one. Now, is C equal O? No, take cheapest one, is one, and plus one equal two. Now, is C equal T? No, take cheapest one, it's 2 plus 1, 3. So let's go to this row. Is A equal D? No, take cheapest one, 1 plus 1, 2. Is A equal O? No, take cheapest one, is 1 plus 1, 2. Is A equal T? No, take cheapest one, 2 plus 1, 3. Here you go. 
is t equal d no take chip is one two plus one three okay here is t equal o no take chip is one should be two plus one three here is the point. Is t equal t? Yes, t equal t. When the two characters are equal, you take this one. That's mean i minus 1, j minus 1. Here you go. So I will just take this element and add it here. Just move this element to without any cost. So whenever two characters are equal, because this character t equal this character t, so you will not do anything. Just move this from this cell so and move it here. Even if you have here two characters of equal, for example, A and A, you will just move this one. Did you see the cost? Two for place? So, yes, this two or is similar than this two or. This is the best example I could share by dynamic programming. Thank you for watching and see you next. Let me talk in this video about the homework for today. Your homework is this. If I give you a word, for example, cool, and you give you a specific number of characters like a b c o l m o c f you you have to tell me if you could find this word in this or not easy peasy now cool could find cool yes i have c here o the second o and this is l that right yes if i send ask you to find book could you find book is b available yes is O available? Yes. Is O second O available? Yes. Is K available? No. You could say, okay, this one cannot be found, but this one could. So think about this problem and how you could solve it. Thank you for watching and see you next. Let me talk in this video about knapsack problem. And we ask you to solve this problem. So what do you mean by knapsack? Knapsack means there is thief and this thief have package or back and this package like for example could continue or could hold only seven kilo he want to go to the store and he want to store specific thing from the store but this store have too many items for example have iphone what his weight is one kilo just just as example i'm not i i know iphone is not one kilo tv two kilo and for example, another one is five kilo, another thing seven, another three, another like six. So now I would ask you to solve this problem. I would give you first two hints to solve this problem. First algorithm, you say, okay, I will order thing, order the things like an increase by an increase. So I say one, two, three, uh, five, six, seven. So I try to add in my package. I would say try to add one, yes, I could add it. I would try to add two, yes, I could add as try three, yes, I could add. How many items I now have? Six. I want to add six, five, I cannot add because I have six. I could hold, hold only one addition number. So yes, uh, ordering thing uh, by increase order doesn't work. If I look for another way, I say, okay, by decrease order, I would say I have seven, six, three, or seven, six, five, three, two, one i would take the biggest one i would take seven yes i could hold it so now i don't need but this is not optimal solution this is heuristic because this is what may work in one solution and may not work with other solution yes so what i want from you to do is try to solve this problem using dynamic programming think about it and solve it for me thank you for watching and see you next Hey again, let me talk in this video how to solve the knapsack problem. Okay, so to get started, I will create a new package and I will name it com.problems. Com.problems. This way, problems. Okay. And these problems are creating a new class and I will mine class knapsack and make sure to create public method. Very, very simple class so this is my class so uh, a knapsack problem I would have suppose I to ha have a set of of numbers I want to put them in my in, in my knapsack so I say I have integer set of integers numbers and I would assume I have one I have five whatever six nine ten so this is the numbers 
that I have it. And uh, when the, the numbers that I, I, the user want to put, or, or we want to put, for example, he want to put only six. So in the case six, he will get 115 or six and uh, six only. So I would, I would name this one, uh, what do you name it? My pass kit. I will name it six, okay? Integer. So this is the two is, the, is considered as the input for my, my app. This is the input, okay? And here my solution. So, so on the solution, there is many, many uh, possible solution we could do. But what's the easiest one? So if you th see this sets have how many numbers? One, two, three, four, uh, one, two, three. Oh, sorry, one, five, six, nine, ten. So this is the numbers I have them in my sets. So what is the possible selections? The possible will be two of what? Two of one, two, three, four, five. Two or of five. Why? Because there is many possibility. This one and this one. This one and that one. So. So there is many possibilities. So when you have five character, I ask you how many possibility you have. You will say the possibility is two over five. If I told you you have three, you will tell me yeah the possibility two, two over three. This way, okay. So five if the possibility is two over five. How I could get these possibilities? Very easy. I could define a for loop integer i equals zero i less than one and I shift this one with the size of my set, which should be the set dot length. Okay, this way, and here I would say I plus plus. So, what I mean by that, that's mean I'm creating a loop start from one and ended by the one shifted by the size of our size for length. So what I mean by this, if I just want to print this one alone, does mean I have number one, this one number one, and when I say the one is shifted by, for example, one is shifted by five in this case, so that's mean I will add five zeros before the one. That's mean I have one, one, two, three, four, five zeros. So this is in binary. So how you, how you represent it will, in an integer, you will see. So this is what I mean. So I'm going from zero to 2 over 5. So if I want to print all these numbers as a numbers, you will see them as a i. Hmm. You will see them how they look like as a as an integer. So if you if I just minimize this screen to be a cool. So you see I start from 0 and I ended by 31 or 32 is 2 over 5. If you want to see them as a binary, you could see them as a binary. You could say integer dot uh, to binary string and you just convert the i and you'll see them as a binary so this is the possible binaries numbers you see so from zero to one two three and go on until see this is fives okay it's 23 so because the 24 the, the number that after that this will be one five zero so is that right yeah one five zero is the number after this number so this is all the possible scenarios. For these scenarios, I want to get the numbers for everyone. So for this scenario, I want to get the equivalent ones. For one, I will get the equivalent one, which should be only one. For two, I will get the two only. Okay, how I would do that? Okay, now we understand every loop, for every loop you will, you will have different binary number. Same thing for my set. So if I say integer, j equals zero and j less than what less than the n just just the size of set so set dot length and i would say j plus plus what this one will generate for us this one will in this case i have a loop is going through the element first element second element third fourth five so whenever i have any number in the app level, it will go inside and check all the numbers. I want to get only the match, so in this case, I'm doing and between what? Between one i 
it's going with an add gate with what with one for j i will tell you what that mean in seconds should be greater than zero and because all this should be consider a one so all this consider in this way so what i'm doing here is is very very simple so i know it's so a bit confused for you but look through it in this way when you have a i zero that's mean i'm going here for the j j first element will be uh okay let me just print it for you so i would see what that mean s y s o so you will see what I mean by j by zero. So if you see, because this is a number, so I need to convert this one to integer to a two binary string. So you'll understand what I mean. So here I mean like I'm getting one, that's mean first element in binary, two is the second element, three is the third element, it's not three, it's six. So just move adding one zero, this one, is this this one is that element so every number represent by binary numbers so when i put do and gate between this first element with four zeros no one will no it will not show you any number when i create do to add gate between the one with this one i will see a different result so that's that's the idea behind it so now I'm going here, and this case will give me many possible solutions. I would assume here before this for loop I have a string, and I will name it a packet. Okay, the packet by default will be empty, and here the packet will be equal packet plus set for j, and when it's done through all these loops, it would print for me the sets. Okay. And I want to see what it could show me. What's the possible scenario? So, so here I see uh, too many numbers. Why? Because I added it outside that loop. Should be inside this loop, and this guy should go inside this because I'm talking about internal loop, not external. So see, first case I didn't get anyone. Second case I did get only one. Third case I get five only. Fourth I get one and five and bum 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 continue if you want to add space so it would they will not be very like one beside the other so you'll not have that problem so see i get all possible combinations all possible combination for this set or all the subsets for this set so this question could that's in this case we get all possible subset for this set now for every subset i need to check if i get my numbers so I say I do it in this way. First of all, here I define number sum will be equal zero. And when here I'm getting any bracket, I will say sum equals sum plus set for j. I'm just getting how many numbers I have it. Now in here I say, hey, if the sum equal whatever I have, what I asking, what I'm asking for, just a printed. Otherwise don't print it so here you go and that is so here i'm saying this if i just rerun it so i get for six if i give it input six he give me other six coming from one and five or six only if i tell them i want 50 he will tell me you could get 50 by one and nine one five nine by six and nine by five and ten yes so this is how we solve knapsack problem but this is a very complex solution because it's n square there's many many possible solutions for the problem but i decide to use to select this way because this way of it could solve you any pro any any combination problem so for example if someone asks you find all the subsets for this set you could write same code if someone asks you tell me uh, give me the numbers if i sum two numbers from the list that give me 10 you will know how to use this so same code just you modify it knapsack same thing so the idea is just teach you like what i mean by shift when i shift a number to get other possibles how to convert array 
to be such as this way so on every number represent in binary so you get different combinations so how are we done thank you for watching see you next buddy did you talk in this video about mp complete and what we mean by mp complete sometime you get specific to problem and this problem you cannot solve it this is not a problem up to you this problem it cannot be solved so easy busy you would go to your boss and say hey boss i cannot solve it do you know what will happen you will get fired because your boss is think you cannot solve the problem so i will go and look for another programmer maybe he could solve this problem but the reality this problem not only you could not solve it if the boss hire another one he also cannot solve it so you have to say i cannot solve i cannot solve it either no one could solve it and you give a proof for that in this case your boss will not fire you because you give a proof that not only you cannot solve the problem this problem already cannot be solved which type of problem cannot be solved the problem that have exponential input in comparison with the exponential output in comparison with the input so what i mean by that when you have a specific fraction and you have y for example and when you give one the output will be two when you give two the output will be four the out when you give for example three the output will be six if you see the input and output it really match like you could understand this fraction could be implemented because the growth of this fraction on x and y is going in this way that's mean yes this problem could be solved but if you have the input is one and the output is two when you give input two the output would be one thousand and then give it three the output would be like three million if you see there is no match between input and output see this type of problem could give you exponential result that's in this way so this type of problem if you see it in your in your when you try to work this problem this type of problem name it mp company so this problem cannot be solved because there is no match between input and output you cannot be uh, give a, a, a so optimal solution for it i will give you a basic example for uh MP complete like travel salesman. Do you know travel salesman? Travel salesman. This is a person. I hope I'm drawing well. This person who travel between name it travel salesman. Travel between cities. Okay. And he have to visit all cities, like five meter, ten, five mile, ten mile, six mile, fifteen mile, twelve mile, whatever. Let me suppose this one, and nine. 15 6 he have to travel between all these city taking uh, in your consideration he have to take short path between all these cities and visit every cities once time so this type of problem name it mp complete because you cannot solve it you could solve it in some type of solution like uh nearest neighbor or nearest neighbor yes you say okay he start here i will take nearest one then he start for example, with the nearest one here, but the nearest one, next nearest one is here, and next nearest one, which the next, next nearest one, but same, you get here, then you say here. But this is not optimal solution because this work in case, but will not work on other case. So we name it this solution is heuristic solution. So, so there is no optimal solution in this type of a problem when it be MP complete. But how you could not MP complete when you compare the input and the output? If the output changing in exponential way, that means hey, this problem is MP complete. I cannot solve it. So make sure when you find this problem in your and you make sure how you identify it because when you go to job interview, you will have a lot of a question about travel sales mind. They be hidden inside the question. For example, they told you someone want to travel between cities and he have to find the best weather if, if he travel from one city to another. If the weather is, is bad, he cannot travel to the city. If the weather is good, he could travel, but he cannot go back. The same travel salesman, but hidden problem.
So make sure to understand this type of problem and identify them. And we go to the interview say, hey, this is MP company. This problem cannot be solved. Yes, here we're done. And thank you for watching and see you next.